Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of our uh, witnesses today. I wanted to follow up uh, with uh, Mr. Cornsey. Is that how you say your, it is, yeah. pronounce your last name? Uh, some of the comments that were made by uh, Ms. Zgama. I'm making it more complicated than I really need to. Um, she mentioned in her in her uh, 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 presentation that uh, you hadn't identified a single environmental problem related. Uh, you hadn't had a single incident that your rule was trying to to um, help or that uh, an incident that it happened. So I, I guess my question would be, the question that raised in my mind is, you know, have you uncovered any new or previously unknown environmental problems or incidents that your rule would fix, uh, which are not addressed by state laws that you could share with us today? So the goal of the rule is to address the same issues that state regulators are addressing, but to do it on a nationwide basis. I mean, part of the important point here is that the Bureau of Land Management has responsibility for oil and gas leases in 32 different states. There are some states who have done an excellent job in this area. Not all states have been as advanced as states like Wyoming, for instance. So, you know, related to sort of the purpose of stepping forward on this, the same need that the state saw is the same need that we see, which is you have much more sophisticated drilling techniques being used. You have very intense pressures, uh, a whole different scale of pressure being applied to these wells than 10, 30, 40 years ago when a lot of our regulations were put in place. And so the same quality standards that the states see a necessity to bring forward new regulation is what's also been driving our efforts. But the base question I was asking was, is there another, is there an incident, has something prompted this uh, in, in more recent history? No single incident, no. No. Let me ask a question that uh, Mr. Watson, Wat, Watson mentioned in his opening statement. Uh, he mentioned the transparency, and I think this has been an issue in West Virginia, passed a law a couple years ago. Transparency was one of the issues that was tried to address by the state legislature. Uh, he mentioned that uh, all of the uh, chemicals and all of the um, information is is there basically in real time. Is that basically the interpretation I had, Mr. Watson, of what's going on? As far as the BLM website? No, your oh. website. Oh, yeah. Our website has all the information, not just the chemicals. But, but you, were, you said that, in, uh, that your understanding of the BLM rule would be that theirs would not be as transparent as what you have at the state right now. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you have a response to that? Yeah, I, I found that to be a, an interesting point, and that, that actually is something that we're very interested in. Um, we have what I think we would sort of broadly recognize as a very old system, right? So we're still using paper files in most offices. And so we have a very strong desire to step forward. One thing we're working on right now is catching up states like Colorado in terms of with our drilling permit application. We are making an effort, hopefully by the end of this year, to go online nationwide so that you can submit your paper, your drilling permit application electronically. You can know where we're at in the processing and that we can hopefully provide better online information so you can have the kind of transparency that Wyoming has. But well, I think this points to a, a good illustration in that the state of Wyoming is so much more forward-leaning than what you've just uh, described at the BLM. Why not you know, cede to the state of Wyoming this this uh, transparency and let them have the state primacy over this uh, because they do have a system that is fully developed and fully fleshed. Uh, that's what I don't understand. Yeah. And this goes back to my, to my initial offering that we have responsibilities nationwide. And so what we've tried to build in this rule is something that provides a basic foundation. I think the operators that are working in Wyoming are going to have no problem following the rule that BLM has, has laid out because it's very similar to what Wyoming has in place. So what we've developed at the variance process, which has been discussed a little bit, makes sure that, as has been the case for many, many years, when there are federal rules in place and state rules in place, the higher standard is followed and everyone carries forward. And so, you know, this is the way that oil and gas has been, has worked, and this is the way that we've work together as a federal government and as states for, for ages. And so there's nothing fundamentally different about this rule and about how it will work. So we've got a baseline, and I think you know, we're excited to work closely with states like Wyoming. Mr. Watson, is that how you see this rule in terms of working state, federal? Well, it, you've been, he basically said you've been working like this anyway, and it's going to have very little impact in Wyoming. Well, that's not true as far as fracking, because 
the BLM hasn't Im imposed any fracking rules. So for the last five years, we've imposed our rule on federal lands. All right, thank you.